Among all his masterpieces like Norwegian Wood, Kafka on the Shore or After Dark, there are still some lost books that some Haruki Murakami fans never heard about. Reports that are not translated yet. Maybe they are sold out. Maybe memories are lost. But one of these books is a very personal one that explains his travels to two very special countries that are rich in history. Greece and Turkey. Uten Enten is a road essay that has been published in Japan in 1990 as two separate volumes, centering around one country in each book. There is no official translation, no ebook, only the two paperbacks and special edition from 2008 in Japanese. In today's video, I would like to talk about Uten Enten. Murakami travels not to see places only, he travels for himself. No matter how far you travel, you can never get away from yourself. This quote comes from the man himself, and it surely results from the experiences he made. And as he writes for himself, he also travels for himself. Therefore, Uten Enten is not only a typical travel journal, it is also his reprocessing of his impressions he made in Greece and Turkey. But let's start chronologically. In September 1988, Murakami embarks on a six-week journey commissioned by the publisher Shin Chosha for a new magazine. After traveling from Japan to a few holiday villages, together with the editor and the photographer Matsumura, he spends four days on the sacred peninsula of Mount Athos. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, this peninsula hours nearly 1,400 monks in 20 Eastern Orthodox monasteries. An autonomous state under Greek sovereignty, entry into the area is strictly controlled and only male residents are allowed to live there and only male visitors are allowed. In his own words, Haruki says, From here on there are no more women, no taverns, you can no longer hear Michael Jackson, no more tourists. This is the frontier of the real world. In the second chapter, about Atos world, Haruki gives background information on the peninsula, its history and rules. Murakami describes his motivation for the trip. I wanted to see what kind of people are here, what everyday life is like. Murakami provides a longer section on the differences between the monks in terms of clothing, color and appearance. If you are now hearing a big aha in your mind, you are absolutely right. Greece, frontier of the real world, no woman allowed. Yes, Murakami found his inspiration for Sputnik's sweetheart here. Sumire is a Japanese woman who has dropped out of school to become a novelist. Kei is one of her closest friends and also the narrator of the story. Miyu, an older woman, enters the story and captures Sumire's heart. This is the first time she has ever been drawn to anybody. Miyu soon asks Sumire to come work for her. Kei suddenly begins to receive letters from Europe written by Sumire. With them, he is able to track Sumire's and Miu's business travels across the continent. In her last letter, Sumire mentions that instead of coming home as originally planned, she and Miu are to spend some extra time on a Greek island vacationing. In case you haven't read Sputnik's Sweetheart yet, I don't want to spoil. Now, before we take a further step to the Turkish section of Uten Enten, it is quite important to learn about the Greek-Turkish connection. Not far away from each other, Greece and Turkey have endured a turbulent relationship for centuries, let it be during the Ottoman rule in Greece or World War I. It is commonly claimed that while ordinary Greeks and Turks want to live together peacefully, many politicians were the ones who continued rising tensions. 
Greeks and Turks have much in common, things like music, food and humor. During the 1970s, many Greeks would sing a song about two friends, Yanis and Mehmet, who discuss philosophy of a wine in Istanbul. In the song, Mehmet says that while he believes in Allah and Yanis in a Christian God, both share the same hurt. And feeling the same hurt connects. Stepping into the Turkish section of Uten Enten, Haruki Murakami tells about Kurdish guerrillas in Turkish border areas, without taking a side or judging anyone. Murakami came to Turkey at a time when terrorism was escalating. He tries to understand the political situation which was stressed in the 80s. And here again, you will find another inspiration. If you think about Murakami and guerrillas, first thing coming into your mind is 1Q84. Tengo, one of the main characters of 1Q84, is eager to rewrite Fukaeri's story of E. Chrysalis. When meeting Fukaeri's sensei, Ebisuno, he learns about her past. Her parents were members of a commune called Takashima. Her father, Tomotsu Fukada, was Ebisuno's former friend and colleague. In 1974, Fukada founded a new commune called Sagikake. Eventually, Disagreements led a radical faction of Sagikage to form a new commune called Akebono. The Akebono commune eventually had a gunfight with police near Lake Motosu in Yamanashi. A gunfight against authorities in the mountains is something that is present in the reports of Uten Enten. There is probably no other country with such a large number of soldiers apart from the countries at war. Not only the soldiers, but also the police. You always come across people in uniform, he says about Turkey. Here it is necessary to look what a soldier means for Murakami. Japan became a demilitarized country after World War II. When we say Turkish soldiers, we Japanese think of Turkish soldiers as rude and cruel as in the movie Lawrence of Arabia. In my opinion, this idea is purely an image of Turks created by Europeans. However, when I look at it from a Japanese perspective, I think that they are not cruel and rude at all. Of course he talks about Turkey not only in a political view, and Haruki wouldn't be Murakami if he wouldn't mention food and people. Turkish bread was the most delicious among the breads of the countries I have visited so far, he says, and talks about the magic of chai, the Turkish tea. During his 21-day trip he saw many places and met a lot of people. Especially in the villages, it was very nice to stop the car in front of a bakery that caught our eye when it was lunchtime and wait for the bread to be baked. When we got the fresh bread, we were sitting down and sharing it. He also explains that they entered tea houses many times during the day. No matter which country you go to, tastes tend to change as the trip gets a little longer. But tea in Turkey was more appealing to us than drinking espresso in a bar in Italy or Greek coffee in Greece. Was that the magic of the tea? What do you think? Maybe you have read Uten Enten or know about other lost books of Haruki Murakami. So let me know in the comments and take care. See you in the next video. Until then, stay happy and read Murakami.